So welcome back mga Kapinoy Channel. Andito tayo ngayon sa Usapang, Usapang Pinoy. Pinoy. So kasama ko pa rin si Jeric Mendoza. At kasama na natin pa rin si Sakani Pali. Pero Jeric, meron tayong inimbita ngayon. Yun, para naman Pag may kakibas. Ayan. <laughs> Miss Jeannie Buwan. Ayan. Hello mga Kapinoy Channel. Parang pamilyar si Jeannie. Opo oh, nga eh. <laughs> Pero we will have Jeannie wear a different hat today. Today, Because today we have invited Jeannie as the Business Development Director of J. Mendoza International Student Division. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so, tuloy na natin ang usapan. And then I will be direct to the point, ano? Sure. Um, kasi na, ang, ang episode natin is back to school. Mm -hmm. Kasi alam naman natin na September is the start of uh, classes in all levels dito sa Canada. No? Mm -hmm. At isa sa mga natatanggap nating mga emails, uh, na questions sa ating mga kababayan sa Pilipinas ay eh, paano daw ba mag-aral ang isang Pilipino dito sa Canada? Mm -hmm. What are what's what are the what's the first step that they should make? Jeannie? Yes, um, sa ating mga Pilipino no, since yung mga bata pa tayo, we always believe that education is the key to success. Oh, yan ang oh, pangarap sa akin na yan. Exactly, yeah. And syempre, yung mga parents din, pangarap talaga nila na makapag-aral ang kanilang yeah. mga anak, you know, abroad, in Canada, mm -hmm. exactly. in the United States, or in Europe. Pero sa ating mga kababayan na hindi alam kung saan mag-uumpisa, I think the first step that you really have to do is know what you want. Ano bang gusto mong kunin? Exactly. Yeah, so, masters, mm -hmm. gusto mong mag-undergrad, gusto mong mag-PhD. And what anong field? Anong field? So, exactly. And what field? Anong field or anong specialization? So that is really the key para makapag-aral kayo in Canada. That's the most important question mm -hmm. kasi the course will drive the school. Exactly. Oh. We go to, diba? Yeah. Dahil iba't ibang school, iba-ibang specialization. Yeah. So if you're, you plan to go into a trade, ano, ano, career, career no? then better go to a trade school yeah. in, in Canada. So hindi lahat. But one thing, Gani, that uh, people need, needs, uh, I need to know, ay dapat yung school ay accredited ng immigration. Okay. So may tinatawag na grupo ng schools na tinatawag na Designated Learning Institu Institution, ano? Okay. Or DLI, na sila lang yung accredited ng immigration kapag international student natin ang usapan. Um, okay, so may, may listahan yan. May listahan so yan. So hindi lang... Basta-basta kung saan eskwela ang Canada. Yes. Not all yes. schools in Canada are accredited. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they can see this, ano, no? They can see this list, fortunately, uh, through uh, a certain website ng immigration, ano? Okay. Na ipa-flash natin dito sa screen. So, tinata or they could just Google designated learning, learning institutions. DLI. That's yeah. correct. And they will find the list of schools that are accredited. Mm -hmm. But the problem, Gani, is that hindi lahat ng designated learning institutions, hindi lahat ng courses nila ay pwede sa international oh, students. Okay. Yes. So hindi lang basta accredited ang isang uh, institution, mm -hmm. kundi dapat accredited din yung course, course. na yun para maging, uh, what is this, para maging eligible ang isang mm -hmm. international, international student. student. Uh, the problem is may listahan ng designated, designated learning institution pero walang listahan yung, yung accredited, accredited courses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the only way they could just really find out is really, they really need to ask the school. Yes, and okay. with that, meaning, ikaw mismo, email mo yung school and ask them, is this course that I would like to take accredited um, with the International Student Division? But usually naman siguro wala namang problema in terms of getting a response from the school. No, no. Yeah. But of course, it's, it, it's difficult to rely on sa sasabihin, ano? So I think, the key part is they really have to have somebody on the ground. Mm -hmm. anak nila or certain organizations like our group na, na pwedeng tulungan i-verify kung accredited talaga yung, yung course, yung school. Makikita nila online. Yeah, there is a list online. That's, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, alam na natin ang course natin na gusto mm -hmm. kunin. Um, nasiguro natin na accredited yung course na yon sa designated learning institution. Yes. yes. Okay. So, paano naman, ano naman ang mga qualifications na required mm -hmm. sa isang foreign student para ma para magkaroon siya ng visa or yun, yun ba yun? Visa? Or, study or, visa. Or yes. study visa para maka, makapaglakbay siya at mm -hmm. makapasok dito sa Canada. Pero bago natin sagutin yan, uh, words muna from other, from our sponsors. Yes. Yes.
So welcome back mga Kapinoy Channel. Andito pa rin tayo sa Usapang Pinoy. So bago tayo nag-break, um, napag-usapan natin kanina yung designated learning institution mm -hmm. at dapat accredited din uh, yung courses for international for students. International students. Mm -hmm. So alam na natin ang kanyang aralin, uh, alam, alam na natin ang designated learning institution. Paano mag-qualify, uh, Jeannie, mm -hmm. ang isang Filipino in, in the Philippines yes. in order for him to be issued a visa mm -hmm. uh, para makapasok siya dito mm -hmm. sa Canada? Yes. So first thing, napakaraming mga eskwelahan na pwedeng pasukan sa Canada. Sure. And each school has a different requirement. You know, so some school would require for a resume, some school would require for um, your transcript of record or even references. So again, iba-iba yan. It really depends on what they need from you. But again, organizations just like us can help you or you know, give you a checklist para hindi na kayo mag-email back and forth to the school. So it, it really makes your life easier and it makes the processing time shorter. So first pala na dapat mong isecure is the acceptance of the school. That's correct. Yes. May, may tinatawag na requirement sa yung pag-apply na letter of acceptance. Ano? Okay. At yung letter of acceptance na yon mm -hmm. ay depende sa schools. Sa school yes. na nabanggit ni Jeannie, iba't ibang school, iba't ibang requirements. Mm -hmm. ano? Meron na ipapagawa ka ng essay yes. or did you essay. Mm -hmm. ano? So depende sa school. Um, in our case, we deal with everybody. Pero meron din kami partner schools mm -hmm. na because they know us, no? Uh, and they know how they op operate. Kuminsan, for example, requirements like IELTS, we just highlight how a certain course nila is uh, leaning towards English naman. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they agree na you waive yung ibang requirements. Yes. So, you know, the, the kind of value that, that organizations like, like, like us do. So, hindi lang kami nagpo-focus sa pag-apply ng student permit, ano? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our coverage is really how to, from start to finish, paghanap ng yeah. school, negotiating with the school mm -hmm. uh, in our case, among my partner schools, nakakuha pa kami installment yes. para sa tuition fee. Mm -hmm. That's right, para mas magaan yung ano, that, big, that's yung big land. Mm -hmm. Pag-uusapan ng tuition fee, magpo-financial. Is there a, a fixed financial requirement para makapag-aral dito sa Canada? Is there an estimate or? Okay, so so basically, ang, 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 ang concept gani is if you're studying in Canada, you should be able to afford studying yes. in Canada. Yeah. In, in, in fact, uh, lagi sa aking evaluation na, na, na kung, kung mag-qualify or hindi. Mm -hmm. I usually just focus on the bottleneck. And the usual bottleneck is really the, the proof of funds. Yeah. Kasi ang, ang, ang key for student, and it's not guaranteed pa rin, ano, pero ang minimum na proof of funds for, for international students, kapag isang aplikate, would be about $10,000 plus the cost of tuition fee. Yes. So if the cost of tuition would be about G, 10, 15? Uh, yeah, between 10 to 15 thousand. Depends on the school. Yes. Depends yes. on the designated school. Yes. So based on experience, ano, mga around $10,000, yes. minimum $20,000 mm -hmm. proof of funds. Yes. But the only thing that I want to emphasize again is that the difference with this proof of funds, hindi kailangan dun sa estudyante ng pera. Okay. Because, syempre, ang konserto ng, ng pag-aaral ay yung magulang mo kuminsan nagpapaaral sa'yo. That's right. Yeah. Or kuminsan nakakuha ka ng scholarship. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, kuminsan ay pinag-aaral ka ng yung employer. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, ang nagpapakita ng proof of funds ay a close relative. No? Yeah. But of course, uh, you know, at the end of the day, all application has to make sense. Hindi pwede yung, yung, yung ka kaibigan mo, papaaralin ka. No? Medyo, yeah. medyo right. mahirap i-convince na totoo talaga na gusto mag mm -hmm. But that's a key thing. Once you're done with the proof of funds, Usually the rest are easy. Uh, and that's just paperwork na requirement madali lang. That's correct. Pero alam mo, Jeric and Jeannie, one of the issues, alibawa, isang estudyante doon sa Pilipinas na married, ano, mm -hmm. may anak. Uh, isang issue siguro ng pag-aaral dito sa Canada ay mm -hmm. mahihiwalay siya doon sa yeah. kanyang pamilya. Hindi yeah. mo naman, tayo mga Pilipino, mm -hmm. we're very closely, mm -hmm. uh, closely need to our yes. family. At uh, is there an option? Mm -hmm. uh, family. Family. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, one of the main pillars of the Canadian immigration can is that uh, your family reunification. Mm -hmm. So very important sa Canada na magkakasama pamilya. Mm -hmm. The good thing about international students, kapag na-approve yung international student visa nila, yung spouse nila pwede mag-apply na tinatawag na open work permit. Mm -hmm. So pwede mag-trabaho yung spouse? Pwede mag-trabaho yung spouse. Oh, that's good to hear. And that's full-time. Mm -hmm. And they can work with anybody, any employer. 
Okay, walang restriction. That's good to hear. That's, good That's to correct. Hear. And aside from that, pati yung mga anak, depending on the age, can apply also for a student permit or yes. a bistro permit. Depends on age. Mm -hmm. And they can avail of the free educational system. In the That's correct. Yeah. If a proven international student, okay. That with the lahat. Okay, that's that's good to hear. That's here, correct. Here, here's the thing. Here's the, like, the last question, na, no? Mm -hmm. Um, paano pag nagustuhan nila in Canada? Ayan. Is there an option for them to stay here? Yeah. For okay. Um, well, basically, iba di province gani, you know, may mga programa sila for international students. Okay. But this is one thing that I would like to emphasize na hindi naman pa ngayon iba, no? Kadalasan yung mga programa for international students ay employer driven. So somebody has to have a job offer para uh, magkaroon ng para pumasok sa mga international student category, no? But the good thing about kapag estudyante ka, no? Uh, usually lesser yung requirements, no? Uh, uh, compared to sa mga work, uh, 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 workers na. But that's a key thing, ano? Na laging pinapangit. People can oversell you the idea, oh, if you're an international student, you can become PR. Yeah. You know what? The usual bottleneck is really finding an employer. Exactly. So I really suggest that if you're an international student and, and if you're planning to be permanent resident, you know, so really build that uh, relationship with an employer. Because an international student, they can work up to 20 hours per week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. They're allowed legally. So sometimes, as I said to the client, is develop that relationship with your employer because they might be able to help you become permanent resident. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, Jeric and Jeannie, wala na tayong oras. Ano? Na, bilis na oras. Uh, na, eh. Marami pa sana mga katanungan ng ating mga kababayan. Um, however, if they would like to ask their questions or get yeah. in touch or get uh, the services of Jamie mm -hmm. Dosa and Associates International Students Division, paano nila gagawin yun? Okay, so first, we're just one click away. Mm -hmm. Kung meron po kayo mga katanungan, andyan sa baba yung aming email address at ang aming website. So please visit our website. We can definitely assist, you know, yung mga interested na students sa ating mga kababayan from choosing the school, um, checking if their course is um, accredited, no, sa DI, DLI, sorry, at kung pwede to sa international students. And from uh, getting the letter of acceptance, yung kanilang student visa, and really lahat ng mga detali kailangan nating ayusin, pwede namin kayong tulungan sa amin. Yon, thank you very much. And mga kababayan, this has been your Usapang Pinoy. Pinoy.